Boss. There ain't nothing more soul satisfying than a cool breeze of blowing on a pair of hot, tired feet. Yes, sir, it's mighty nice. And a great aid to think of. Maybe so, boss. But it sure ain't no help to bad luck. But if you're gonna believe in luck, why don't you believe in good luck? Get you more. Won't give me nothing to eat. Try closing your eyes. Turn around three times and spitting over your left shoulder. <laughs> That's a new one. Close my eyes and turn around three times. Spit over my left shoulder. Well, dog, my cat. Sonny, ever try earning your vittles or working? Uh-huh. I've been the workingest fella you ever saw. Doing what? A little this and that. Where? Here and there. When? Now and then. Seems as though you need a vacation. <laughs> Boss. Must be more than a million dollars. One twenty, two fives, and ten singles. Forty dollars in all. Surrounding some pieces of newspaper to give them confidence to grow on. No, it ain't a million, but a seed for a million. Someday, maybe. Maybe. Nothing makes people so confident, trustful, as the sight of a lot of money. Well, you gotta be getting it. Which way you going, Bob? Up the road. I'm looking for a cool, green valley. Can I help you look, Bob? No, oh, thank you, son. What's your name? Hip. What's your other name? Just plain old Hip. Ain't you got no folks? No, sir. I'm single. <laughs> well, it might be a long walk, but if you think you're able, come on along. Close my eyes and see. Good luck. Here I come. Oh. Going toward town? What town? Well, it ain't but one, Cold River, about five miles up the valley. Cold River. That's a soothing name to hear on a hot day. Come on, climb aboard. Thank you. I don't mind if I do. Pickett's your name. Pliny Pickett. Baines is mine. Scattergood Baines. I do. Scattergood. Kind of a funny name. Parents and names are two things babies ain't got no control over. You read, old conductor? Was. Retired today. Inspector said I couldn't see good enough. Oh, I got a bop him right square in the jaw. If the problems of this world could be solved by bopping somebody on the jaw, it'd be mighty simple. Well, what this valley needs is a railroad running up here from the main line. What in tarnation for? Timber around here, ain't there? Yeah. Needs to be hauled on it. 
You want to be a conductor on my railroad? Yes, sir. Your railroad. Well, I'll calculate to build one sometime. Somewhere. Maybe here. Up and down this valley. You're hired. Picking up the shoe there. That's Ed Locker, the fellow I was telling you about. He's a smart one, too. Mail? Ought to break your neck for that, Piney Pickett. The way you throwed that shoe, person you'd think would have nailed a horse. <laughs> <laughs> you skin them before they skin you. I'll see you later. Good day to you, neighbors. One of them railroads run up here to save me a parcel of blisters. Wouldn't pay to do all that walking just for a visit. The calculator will have to settle. Your towns are growing. Its population just increased by me. <laughs> Size of a <our> grub. <laughs> right, good neighbor. My line's anything needful. What do you figure this town needs the most? Wouldn't be a clothing store. I sell all the clothing that's needed in this town. Dry goods? I take care of the dry goods. A grocery store, maybe. I sell them. Well, seems as though you fellas got the business this town all sewed up. Outside, you'd have a hard time making a go of it here, sir. Well, you never can tell. A fellow like me come along and open up a fine general store, up-to-date, fresh goods, low prices. Low prices? Mm. Calculate the people to sit up and take notice. We got nothing to worry about from a tramp like you. Well, now, there's tramps and, uh, tramps. Uh, Say, do you really thinking about opening up a store here? Neighbor, never give away valuable information. Unless you get something first. Yeah. I'm glad you leading citizens see fit to give me such a hearty welcome to your town. It's right kind and generous of you. Come on, Hip. Guess we better be on our way. Nice pitching. Mm -hmm. There. You can't catch no fish without you use the right kind of bait. Yes, sir, Mr. Bain. He means business. Leased that store for three years. Hmm. Be three year lease, signed, sealed, and delivered. Twelve fifty per month, three months paid in advance. When the folks around here wanted dry goods, they always had to come to me. Well, he'll take our trade away. It's going to cost us a lot of money. Grand total of uh, thirty-seven dollars and uh, fifty cents. Uh, Shake. Good luck to you. Thank you. What do you take to quit now? Sorry, neighbors, but this is my busy day. Call again. Sweep up good, boys. Give me a hundred dollars. A piece? Oh, neighbors. I've been looking for a place like this. I calculate on staying. Hundred and fifty. Fish or get to bait cutting. Two hundred apiece. Well, I'll tell you, neighbors. Come back here inside of an hour with 750 cash, and I'll agree not to sell groceries, dry goods, notions, millinery, or men's or women's clothes in this town for a period of 10 years. Scattergood, Baines. Here you are. Now you can lock up and get out of town. Nope, I calculate on being all fired permanent around here. But this document you just signed. Don't say nothing about agreeing not to sell uh, hardware, stoves, harness, farm implements, and such. Well, show you. 
You're the ones who stated the proposition and who drew up that document, which is now signed all proper and legal. I didn't offer to sell you nothing. You offered to buy. Yeah, good day, citizens. <laughs> I'm now in the hardware business. Yes, and he's going to build a railroad, too. <laughs> Mr. Baines, is he sleeping? His toes are wiggling. Nope. When his toes are wiggling, he's cogitating. And when he's cogitating, he don't hear nothing. Except in what I want to hear. What I want to hear right now, Hip, is the sound of your broom is sweeping up. Yes, sir, Mr. Baines. Hold the phone. I'll come. Hold the phone. Baines Associates speaking. Yes, ma'am. When we speak to you, kind of, well, just between you and us. Well, now, we've been friends for a long time, ain't we, boys? That's what I told Jimmy and Bob. Let's speak to Mr. Baines. He's on the school board. He'll do it for us. Do what? Give us a good-looking teacher for a change. You know, the last one we had was kind of... When you're picking a new one, couldn't you get us one like Carol Lombard? Afraid she ain't available. I kind of get your point. It ain't at all unreasonable, neither. Of course, you know, I ain't got the whole say on the school board. They'll listen to you. Everybody does. Well, now, fellas, I'll, I'll do what I can. Gee, that's well, Mr. Baines. We knew you would. Here they come now. Well, goodbye, Mr. Baines. Goodbye, Don't boys. <laughs> I'd honor to welcome the school board of Cool River. How be you, Clara? Glad to see you, Squire. I get a good. Brown? Right, well, thank you. We're all ready to hold the meeting, if you are. Oh, all set to pick the new teacher, huh? Got plenty of applications and photographs right here. That's good. We'll just go inside and look them over. Ladies first. Right. After you, Squire. All right, get a good. Uh, it carries too much flesh. I like my teachers to be spry. Well, I've known folks could be spry sitting down. Well, how about this one? No, she'd be a troublemaker. Got a fussy look. Maybe she's just distressed having her picture took. A lot of folks are that way. I agree with you wholeheartedly, Clara. She'd be a troublemaker. Now, here's one that's real pretty. Easy for the kids to look at, eh, Squire? <clears throat> uh, yeah, too pretty. Is that illegal? I like some sightly myself. Scatter good Baines, you ought to be ashamed of yourself for harboring such thoughts. Well, I don't exactly harbor them. They just flap in and roost like it was their own coop. A pretty teacher can create a sight of trouble. Oh, now this one looks more fitting. Well, dependable looking. Yes, yeah, right plain, I'd say. Just what we want. She'll keep her mind on the school children instead of Saturday night dances. Name's Helen Parker. Got a good background, too. I vote we choose this one. I join with you. Suits me. Well, looks like a landslide in favor of humbleness. I'll write her to come on. Meeting's adjourned. Well, <clears throat> that didn't take so long, did it? No. When you know what you want, you can always get it, can't you? Well... You're giving them school kids just cause for playing hooky. Hello, Scott.
Scattergood. Hello, Rod. How be you? Fine, thanks. Thought when you bought the new car, you were going to put old Sal out to pasture. Calculate if it did that, she'd just lay right down and die. <laughs> old Sal and me's been friends for a good many years. Well, gotta be getting. See you later, Rod. So long. Train's on time again, only seven minutes late. that looks like this? Darn you, school teacher. Nope. Maybe she missed the train down the junction. She might confuse him. Uh, somebody meet me, miss? Oh, I don't think so. I'm just wondering what to do next. Ah, uh, visiting friends? No, I'm looking for Mr. Scattergood Bain. That's me, miss. Oh, Mr. Pickett, I think you better make out your reports. It's very kind of you to meet me, Mr. Baines. I'm Helen Parker. You're uh, who? Helen Parker, the new school teacher. It's all right. I heard you. Ain't my ears that's troubled. It's my eyes that don't make sense. You wrote me at my appointment. There must be some mistake, miss. The girl on this picture is the one I wrote to. You'll grant there's a mighty difference twixt the two of you. Oh, no, that's me, all right. Don't tell me they hired me in spite of this picture. No, because of it. I don't know why the agency sent you this old valentine. I had it taken when I first got out of normal school. That was my idea of what a school teacher was supposed to look like at the time. The school board used up a barrel of judgment choosing this picture. They calculated you weren't constituted to cause any yearn among the young men of the township. Oh, you're joking, Mr. Bain. No, well, I wish there was. But I'm fully qualified to teach. Not according to the Cold River School Board, Jane. They got their minds set on what they want. I hate to say it, miss, but it's my painful duty to inform you that your natural prettiness plumb disqualifies you for the job. Oh, I never heard anything like it. it. Does sound a bit uncivilized, don't it? You think the school board won't approve of me? I'm afraid not, miss. I'm right sorry. Well, you needn't be, Mr. Bain. Just a minute, Miss Parker. Ever see a school board with its apple cart upset? No, why? Well, you're going to. I don't understand. My wife, Morani, knows all about pretty girls. She's one herself. Yes, sir, the prettiest girl in the county. She'll help us upset that apple cart. It's embarrassing the way Scattergood exaggerates about me to strangers. I reckon they get a shock when they first take a look at me. Now, I don't think Mr. Baines was exaggerating one bit. That's mighty nice of you to say so. All right. You can come in now. My, my. You're as good as any quick change artist. Here, put these on. They won't hurt you none. They're just plain glass. I got them from Randy when she went visiting the city <laughs> to protect her from mashers. Oh, good. <laughs> I hope we're not making a mistake. Nonsense. The board's got it coming to them. That's right. You're just practicing the might of diplomacy. That's the art of letting someone else have your way. Oh, my, Mirandy. I plumb forgot it was Beulah's day off. And I invited Johnny Bones up here for supper. Well, don't worry, Scattergood. More the merrier. Now, ain't she a prize? I'm going to let him in. Oh. You know, if we'd remove this collar, I believe it would make the dress look more sedate-like. Oh, come on in, Johnny. Glad to see you. Thanks. Here it is. Signed on the dotted line. Mm -hmm. All legal and proper, I suppose. Well, send me the bill, Johnny. I always like to pay prompt. You could have had this deed notarized for a dollar, Mr. Baines. You didn't need a lawyer. Sonny, I'm the best judge of that. Unless you are so puffed up with your legal chores, you can't find time for my little transactions. <laughs> legal chores? I haven't had a real law case since I came to Cold River. Patience, Johnny. Takes time before pin feathers become wings. Good evening, Mr. Bain. 
evening, Johnny. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Bain. <laughs> this is Miss Parker, Johnny Bones. How do you do? Johnny's one of the legal lights of Pole River. Well, what are we standing here for? I'm hungry. Don't be hungry. <laughs> Miss Parker just arrived. She's our new school teacher. Oh, uh, sit right down here, Miss Parker. Johnny, you sit over there. Then it'll be on the table in just a jiffy. You young people stay right here. I can attend to this. Johnny, what do you do with the evenings here in Cold River? I was just a thinking I got a brand new automobile. Ain't never been used much. Well, I usually... Now, don't interrupt, Johnny. I was just a wondering... Gather good? Bring in the rest of those dishes. Yes, Mirandy. What I was about to say was that that new car of mine is just hankering for somebody to drive her. You planning to stay on in Cold River? Oh, well, that depends on the school board, if they approve of me. Oh, I'm sure they will. Oh, thank you. If he only knew what she really looks like. Parker. Yes, Mr. Jones? Uh, Bones. Oh, I'm sorry, Bones. Uh, you were saying? Uh, yes, that... Um, I, uh, don't you think it's getting kind of warm in here? Well, I hadn't noticed it. I, I thought it was kind of chilly. Oh. Let's see. I calculate we could put her up in that little cottage up the street. You mean the furnished one? Mm -hmm. Very expensive for a school teacher on the little pittance they give her. Well, Mirandy, being as how we own it, we can make the rent right suitable. Looks as though the romance was speeding up from nothing to nowhere. Well, he can't expect Cupid to get a head start with her rigged up that way. It'll be a good test of his common sense. If he likes her in spite of the rig up, then later the prettiness comes as a bonus. <laughs> Having me sign receipts with every carload you deliver is ridiculous. A clerk can do that. What's the matter? Doesn't Baines trust us? Confidentially, no. <laughs> I'm glad we had this option drawn up in Mac's name. With the Hopper property tied up, you'd be able to get Baines out of our hair. We're doing all right. I'm satisfied and so are our stockholders. Why don't you let well enough alone? There you go again. You're always satisfied. We've got to go ahead. With the control of the railroad, we can raise freight rates and make them like it. You haven't got the railroad yet. No, but I'm going to get it. Hey, 
ticket, please. Lovely day, isn't it? A beautiful day. Sure is. That's what you think. There's no smoking in the coach. Well, who's smoking? Now look, don't call me coach. There's no smoking in the coach. Do you call this thing a coach? That's what it is, it's a coach. It should be drawn by a couple of horses. I said there was no smoking. Uh, this whole railroad belongs in a museum. And so do you. What do you mean by destroying another person's property? For two pins, I'd bop you right in the nose. You'll bop who on the nose? You, and I mean it. That's all I wanted to know. <laughs> Hi, Emily. Howdy. Guess I told him a thing or two. You sure did, Pliny. <laughs> He's a cute little man. Howdy, Leif. Hi, you, Pliny. Hey, didn't I see you leaving Crane and Keith's office this morning? Mm-hmm. I had a little business transaction with them. With Crane and Keith? Hmm. Never knowed them to give anybody the best of the deal. Oh, they tried more than once to run Scattergood out of business. He's just too smart for them. Well, I got a good deal. Have legal advice? No. Nope. Hmm. Sign any papers? Well, yeah, I... Yeah, a lot of little print on them that you couldn't read, and even if you could read it, you wouldn't know what it meant. Well, I read it, and it seemed oh, all right to me. Lee, you're not a lawyer. What do you know about whereas is two wits and, and the habeas corpus? That's where they get the better of you. Yeah, I guess you're right at that. Yes. Now, look, Lee. When your pa was alive, he wasn't too proud to go to Scattergood for advice. Maybe you ought to tell him all about it. Yeah. Hmm. On time again. Must be something wrong. Maybe my watch. No, oh, it's running. I can sweep better when I tune in on a little La Bugatta. Suppose you tune in on getting that Simmons order ready. Yes, Epso Fatto. That's Latin. Well, you get back to work. That's American. Yes, sir. Hold the phone. I'll come. Mr. Baines, much associated manager speaking. Oh, yes, ma'am. We got him. Yes, ma'am. Got plenty of them. Right away. Oh, what does she want now? We got plenty of them, too. There wasn't no... wasn't no potato. <laughs> what do we do? Hello, Pliny. Hi. Hey, Mr. Baines. It's kind of good. <clears throat> the late here's got something on his mind. He's been to Crane and Keys, and I think... Now, don't strain yourself, Pliny. Well, I know, but then... Uh... Now, Bob, you just go inside and help yourself to a good cigar. A five-cent cigar. Oh. I guess I know when I ain't wanted. Leif! Seems only yesterday I was dandling you on my knee. Well, I'm afraid I wouldn't remember that. Pliny's a mighty impulsive. Doing business with Crane and Keith ain't exactly on the statutes of the crime. The Constitution gives us the right of dealing with anyone we wanted. I'm glad to hear you say that, Mr. Baines. I've just given them an option to buy Hopper Mountain. Oh, an option, huh? Yeah, they said they didn't want to buy it just yet. I see. Well, I didn't think I could lose anything by it. You accepted their offer? I signed the papers this morning. You think I did the right thing? Well, I couldn't say unless I took a look at that document. Well, they're mailing it to me. As soon as they do, I'll bring it around. Now, you run along home, Leif, and don't you worry none about it. Thanks, Mr. Baines. Goodbye. Goodbye. Scattergood, what do you suppose Crane and Keith want with Lake's property? I don't know, Pliny, but whatever it is, I don't like the look of it. Mm. Oh, 
say, uh, Scattergood, uh, whatever become of that awful pretty girl that you met at the depot? Pliny, women will be the undoing of you yet. Scattergood means you've got no right to say that. I'll admit that I have a roving eye for the fair sex, but no woman ever made a fool of me. Yes, but you better watch that roving eye. Scattergood means <laughs> now you can't talk to me like that. I just won't have it. Parker. The school board's approved your contract. If you care to sign it, why, you can keep a copy and you're all set. Oh, I'm sorry, I guess I forgot to fill it. I have one inside. Don't you think it's a good idea to read it before you sign? When you have an honest face, I trust you. Thank you. Oh, things are such a bother. Why can't people believe in one another? If they did, it'd be a sorry day for my profession. Now, you keep that. Confidentially, though, uh, I feel that way, too. Well, then we do have something in common. I believe we have. How do you like our town? Oh, very much. And I hope they'll like me. You know, it's rather difficult to get adjusted coming from a big city to a small town. Yes, I had that problem, too. You mean you left a big city to practice law here in Cold River? Exactly. In success stories I've read, it's usually the other way around. I got fed up with stale air and city pavements. And there was the vicious business circle. Someone was always ready to step on your heart to get ahead of you. That's not for me. I like the feel of grass under my feet and a little elbow room. You are unusual. Then you've done well here in Cold River. Remarkably. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, oh, I hung up my shingle here six months ago, and they've been running me ragged ever since. Oh, I see. Well, if you'll pardon me, Miss Parker, I think I'll be getting along. I have some important legal matters to attend to. Don't let me detain you. I've enjoyed our little talk. So have I. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, Mr. Bone. Yes? While you've been a success, there are others less fortunate here in Cold River. Now, it'll only cost you a dollar, the giving a bazaar for charity at the school auditorium tomorrow night. A dollar? Uh-huh. <laughs> why, why, certainly. <laughs> oh, you know, I've only got 40 cents. I, <laughs> I must have left my wallet be off it. Oh, that's all right. I'll trust you. No. And now, don't forget, the bazaar's tomorrow night. Well, well, I'm pretty busy, but I'll try and make it. I was told I could find Scott a good bay into you. If you're selling stoves, plowshares, or cockroach powders, I got all I need. Hey, wait a minute. Are you Scatter Goodbane? That's me. Well, I'll be... Oh, see here, young fella. I'm busy. I ain't got no time to listen to salesmen. Well, you got me all wrong, Mr. Baines. My name's McHenry. I represent big financial interests in the East. Oh, how interesting. But, Mr. Baines, I... I want to make you a proposition. Connected with Crane and Keith? I never heard of them. I've been sent down here to buy you out lock, stock, and barrel. Your railroad, your timberlands, all your holdings. I'll do tell. You know, Mr. Baines, we're living in an age of expansion. Youth, speed, streamlining. A firm can't just stand still. Has to either progress or decline. Yep. Yes, sir. Keep these things dusted off. Yes. You know, Mr. Baines, I imagine you are reaching an age when retirement tempts you. Well, funny what some folks imagine. Oh. Now, I'm prepared to offer you $300,000 for all your holdings, including your railroad. And I understand the tax commission valued it at $250,000. That's good arithmetic, too, ain't you? Well, I always think in big figures. Ain't said a word about this here store. <laughs> you want to throw this store in? <laughs> all right, we'll give you a couple of thousand for it. I do tell. More than his worth? The price of this here store, Sonny, is $500,000. That's just plain crazy. Well, not from my point of view. This here store was my first business. Everything I've got sprouted from it. Calculate it's about the most important thing there is. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Bain. 
You see that chair? What? I get a heap of pleasure sitting there chatting with folks and watching Coal River on parade. I wouldn't part with it for less than a million dollars. Now look, Mr. Baines, let's, let's just leave that chair and that store out. But I can give you a good reason for selling your railroad. You like apple pie? Apple, come along with me. That's mighty fine apple pie. You don't seem to understand, Mr. Baines. I'm offering you $250,000 for your railroad plus 10% profit. What about my store and my chair? Mr. Baines, I don't want any part of your store or your chair or any of your other holdings. All right, Sonny, just as you say. $250,000 plus 25,000 profit. And while we're on the subject of railroads, you're not making any profit at the rates you charge for hauling timber? Well, I calculate I'm satisfied just to break even for a while. The people I haul timber for are all friends of mine. Decent folks who work hard to get along. If I whopped up the rates, or if anybody else did, it'd squeeze those little fellas out of existence. That ain't gonna happen, Mr. McKettrick, if I can help it. Then I'll have to play my cards another way. And this way, you and your friends stand to lose everything. I'll cut a tunnel through Hopper Mountain. On the other side of that mountain, I could buy timber at half the price. You own Hopper Mountain? I've got an option on it. Yeah. Appears to be all proper and legal. I assure you it is. Appears as though if I want to get out of this with my whole skin, I'll have to sell out, huh? Then it's a deal. You got any children? Got a boy, six years old. You love him, don't you? Of course. Wouldn't want to give him up just like that, would you? I think I understand. You want time to think it over? Say a week. That railroad of mine means just as much to me as that boy of yours does to you. Let's say three days. You got me, I guess. I'm sorry, Baines, but business is business. No matter who gets hurt. I hadn't thought of it in that way. But you got me sort of convinced. Three days, Baines. I'll see you at the door. Thank you. Good night, Mrs. Bain. Good night. Thank you for the supper. You know, there's something wrong with a man who doesn't eat good, honest apple pie. Leif gave that option to Crane and Key. How did McKetcher get hold of it? There's only one answer. He's in cahoots with him. Randy, if I sell that railroad, our friends stand to lose all they've got. Payne and Keith will jack up the rates, and they'll be forced to sell their land. If I don't sell it, we're liable to lose all we work for. Don't fret yourself, Scattergood. I don't know what we and our friends stand to lose in this ornery Crane and Keith business, but I do know this. You and me started life together a good many years ago, living in two little rooms behind the hardware store. And if we had it to do all over again just that way, I'd find it a mighty exciting experience to gather good beans. Yep, I calculate experience is all you got left when everything else is gone. I'll be ready in a moment. <laughs> Busy as all that, huh? Yeah, I, uh, I was just trying to figure out how much I could sell my law books for. Better keep them if you're going to work on Clayton Moser's case. Oh, I haven't got the case. His brother called it off. I've been a mite interested in that transaction. What happened? Well, I'm afraid you'll have to ask Mr. Moser about that. Well, he ain't up to tell me, so... Uh... Sorry, Mr. Bain, but... I can't discuss his private business, even if I didn't get the job. Them's yours. Mine? Five hundred dollars. I'm swapping with you. For what? Information. I'd like to know more about that Mosier case. Mr. Baines, you know me better than that. I hope I make myself clear. Very clear. If it will relieve your conscience, I haven't any more interest in Mosher than a Zulu medicine man. But I have got a heap of interest in a young fellow who'll turn down a wad of money when he's living on short rations. Johnny, I've been watching you for a long time. I'm convinced now that you're ready to do a real job for me. 
That's a retainer. I want a good lawyer with a closed mouth. Well, now I'm beginning to get the idea. Yeah. Thanks. There's about 50 parcels of land in that uh, stretch of valley there. I calculate I'll need them all. I want you to get options on these properties in your own name. In my name? It's very important. And nobody must know a thing about this but you and me. And Johnny, get those options as cheap as you can. Oh, I'll get them or bust a leg trying. <laughs> Good luck to you, son. Oh, thank you, Mr. Baines. Dance after a while. Well, none of that jiving and rug cutting. I'm all worn out since the last time. No, no, just plain dancing. All right. Oh, Scattergood. I want to thank you for them canned goods. They're selling real fast. I'm glad to hear it, Clara. Buy a box of candy kisses. Buy a box of candy kisses. Well, I never eat candy. But uh, what would I have to give you to get a real candy? Chloroform! What's the matter, Bob? Lost your technique? Funny. It looks like that roving eye of yours has got you into trouble. Oh. Good evening, ladies. Good evening, Mr. Dane. Oh, oh I'm terribly oh. sorry. Here, let me... Uh... Oh, my goodness. Gertrude, you should be more careful. I'll hold them. Scattergood, how do I look in spectacles? Clara, you should never wear anybody else's specs. It's bad for you. Is that better? <laughs> yes, mother. That's funny. Don't see no different with them than I do without them. Thank you very much. Oh, Clara, let's look around a little. Just a minute now. Well, hello, folks. Looks like a big success. You've got Clara to thank for that. Well, I congratulate you, Mrs. Potts. Pleasure's all mine. How about a dance? I'd, I'd love to. Helen's eyes nearsighted. Love's a wonderful thing, Clara. Or first-sighted. Of course, uh, it's been a long time since your courting days. Scattergood Baines, them spectacles was plain window glass. You got good eyes, Clara. You bet. I don't miss a thing. When I said you had good eyes, I meant that that's the reason those glasses look plain to you. Now, if you were suffering with stigmatism... Stigmatism? Mm, they wouldn't look plain to you at all. By the way, before I forget, here's the dollar I owe you, and thanks a lot. I knew I could trust you. I know an honest man when I see one. Well, I, I haven't been very honest with you. That success story I told you, well, it wasn't true. As a matter of fact, I've been a flop. So I discovered yesterday. Uh-oh. Well, that's all over now. I've got my first big retainer and an important assignment. You know, the sort of thing one hopes for. Well, that's grand. Who is the farm boy who said, if you cherish your ideals and believe in your dreams, someday they'll be realized. Well, that was Abraham Lincoln. He was a pretty good lawyer, too. Not a bad measuring rod for any man to set up for himself. You know, Helen, when I first met you, I didn't quite, quite appreciate you. I sense that, and I can return the compliment, Johnny. Oh, uh, what is this important assignment? Well. You're the one person I'd like to share the good news with, but it's confidential. You know, Helen, when I put this thing over, you're the first one I want to tell. I'll be rooting for you. Thanks. Tiny, you know anything about stigmatism? Well, 
I think you take a jigger again, put in some rye, some lemon juice, a little sprig of mint, and a dash of bitters. Stigmatism? Cures anything. What? I'm grateful to you, Scattergood. I just wanted a little advice from you. Well, Jim, advice is the only thing I don't charge for. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks and goodbye. Goodbye, Jim. Could you tell me the address of a girl named Helen Parker? Well, okay, that's how I could. Just a short stone's throw from here. That little white cottage right down the street. Thank you. You won't find her at home right now. She's at school teaching. School? Yes. Oh, I see. Are you relative of hers? No. Just a friend. Much obliged to you. You're welcome. You'll wear your eyes out, Clara. Well, any time I do, I'll get spectacles. They won't be plain window glass, neither. Hmm, stigmatism. <laughs> She's changed her mind again. Clara's mind is like my railroad, subject to change without notice. <laughs> I'm gonna sign no matter what she says. Edward Pop! Coming, dear heart. <laughs> You'll do as I get to do. All right. that was asking for Helen Parker. What about it? It'd be mighty interesting if... Uh... Clara, you're not... Yes, I am. Just one little peep. board's got to see these goings on. But, Claire... Now, don't argue. Get yourself down the road. You can go to bed now, Hep. Good night. Good night, Mr. Bain. Well, there's the last ten to finish the job. Oh, good work, Johnny. Say, if anything goes wrong, they'll want to know why you didn't get those in your own name. Oh, folks up here know I wouldn't do them any dirt. You've got a lot of faith in your friend. I expect McKettrick here first thing in the morning. When he comes, we'll be right ready for him. I hope you know what you're doing, Mr. Baines. Those options are loaded with dynamite. A gun ain't no good, Sonny, unless it's loaded. tongue in a knot and choke yourself to death. I'll go on what's all about. Helen Parker, that's who. Helen Parker. We seen her through a window. She was not only entertaining a man, but she was... Oh, peeking, huh? 
She was in there alone with him, in her commoner. Now, wait a minute. Now, Johnny, don't race your motor. Go on, Claire. Well, she just ain't what she's pretending to be. That's right. Not at all plain and simple like she's been representing. Outrageously alluring. So what? She's an imposter, that's what. For people who peep and spy through windows, you're a fine bunch to be branding anyone. I don't know what you saw and I don't care. But I'll bet my life there's a reasonable explanation for whatever you saw. So the witch hunt is on. You ought to feel very proud of yourselves. Uh, how dare you? Never heard of such cheek of all the gall. Excuse me, Mr. Baines, I need some fresh air. Impulsive, young fella. She ain't fit to teach. She's got to go in the morning. Now, don't be so all fired. No use, Scattergood. We're three votes to your one. Squire, when you get to heaven, don't be surprised if they put you to work moving pianos instead of playing a harp. <laughs> Tell me in the morning? No, it's important. All right. What's the matter, Johnny? Helen, the school board's been spying on you. They're saying... What's happened to you? You're beautiful. Thank you. They said you were an imposter. Gee, you look swell. But you represented yourself as one thing and turned out to be something else. I suppose an explanation is in order. It better be good. Oh, really? Yes, if you want to satisfy the school board. Now, look, I came over here to help stop a lot of ugly gossip. So just tell me the facts. I think we can clear things up. What do they want to know? The one thing, they're curious about that man who was here. Now, look, Johnny. The contract I signed with the school board doesn't give them a pass key into my private life. Anyway, if I told them, they wouldn't understand. Well, suppose you tell me. I'll understand. You? Yes. What about this man? Oh, so that's it. It isn't only the school board who's curious. Oh, wait a minute. Let's get to the point. Who was he? Where does he fit in? Oh, let's drop the whole thing right now. Do you mind? Well, that's the way you feel. You once said we had something in common. Remember? I believe we did. The way I felt for that line of yours about faith and ideals. That was funny. Oh, that's not half as funny as the success line I had to listen to. You won't have to listen to it anymore. Well, that suits me. Good night. Good morning. I don't time, I see. We agreed on three days. I ain't contesting it. Well, what have you decided? I'm on the barrel. You're rolling it. All right, sir. I'll have the papers all drawn up and ready for you to sign tomorrow. $250,000 plus 10% profit. Cash or a certified check. It'll be waiting. And you're being mighty smart, Mr. Baines. Comes a time when a fellow has to think of himself, no matter who gets hurt. You said that yourself. Remember? Yes. Business is business. You said that, too. I ain't forgetting. Well, till tomorrow, then. Say, uh, 10 o'clock? Mm-hmm. Goodbye. Goodbye. Ipso facto. Stop it, Dickens. If I owned that railroad, I'd fire you. You know, Mr. Crane, when I first met Mr. Keith, I didn't think I'd like him. No? Now, I'm sure of it. <laughs> uh, no, now, wait a minute. Now, let's get a fresh start. One, two... Thank you. Gentlemen, you bought yourself a railroad. You mean Baines agreed to sell? To quote the gentleman, there comes a time in a man's life when he's got to think of himself, no matter who gets hurt. Well, it just proves the old bromide. Every man has his price. Including the sage of Cold River. Doesn't sound like Baines to me. He's smart enough to realize when he's licked, that's all. Well, he should worry. He's making plenty out of this deal.
for any kind of a job. The family was patient and was really very decent about everything. But I continued to file applications for a teaching post. And then one day I received your letter to come here to Cold River. Oh, Mr. Baines, you practically know the rest. And that was the Stanley fellow that called on you last night. Yes, he wanted me to return to the act, but... Now, don't you worry, none. I'll give those pious members of the school board a piece of my mind. I'll... Doesn't matter, Mr. Baines. I'm leaving on the noon train tomorrow. Now, don't be hasty. I think I'll slip out the back way and say goodnight to Mrs. Baines. Thanks for everything. Surprise party of some kind? We got something to say to you, Scattergood Baines. Well, go ahead, Clara. Why are you selling a railroad? Who said I was selling? What? Pliny Pickard. You didn't come to me first, huh? Well, she here, Scattergood. Never mind, Pliny. You that we look up to. You don't yeah, look up to. Wait, 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 I stand to lose just as much as any of you. I'll do the talking. You too, Jim. Yeah, me too, Scattergood. You sold us out. You weren't satisfied to sell your railroad at a fancy price. You had to take advantage of your friends. Now we can understand why you had Johnny Bones working for you. I want us to know. Keep on talking, Jim. I'm a listener. You don't intend, Scattergood, to pick up those options, and you know it. You just use those as bait to sell your railroad. And after you've stuffed your own pocketbook, the mill company owning the railroad will refuse to haul our timber unless we sell it to them at their own price. Yeah. 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 No, Scattergood, you don't care what happens to us. We're left holding the bag. No. Keep on talking, Jim. I'm listening. You don't intend, Scattergood, to pick up those options, and you know it. You just use those as bait to sell your railroad. And after you've stuffed your own pocketbook, the mill company owning the railroad will refuse to haul our timber unless we sell it to them at their own price. Yeah. 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 No, Scattergood, you don't care what happens to us. We're left holding the bag. Yeah. Now, wait a minute, you're a lot of fools. Use your heads and not jump to conclusions. Now, wait a minute, Johnny. They just listen for a minute. There's nothing we want to hear from you. You are just the same as he is. Sure he is. Well, Scattergood, haven't you got anything to say? Good night, Jim. Good night, Pliny. Good night. Oh. All right, so that's fine. Why didn't you tell him, Mr. Baines? Ain't no use talking in a gale of wind. Besides, if the information about those options leaked out and got back to Crane and Keith, we'd be in a heap of trouble. Yes, sir, Johnny. That gun sure backfired. Now, Bob, something you want to say to me? Well, go ahead and talk, Liney. I guess I was wrong. I should have come to you in the first place. But I only told one fellow. And he told the whole world. Well, it made me mad, Scattergood Baines. You're not coming to me letting me in on this. You should have come to me for my advice. Why, well, the whole town's turning again, you. Including you, Bob? I ain't saying. What kind of monkey business is this, anyway? What's the matter? Plenty. What's happened? Get me McKettrick. I'll hang on. Scattergood Baines has options in all of the timberland between here and the junction. How do you like that? Well, then, get me Scattergood Baines. That's funny. You own a railroad, now what are you going to do with it? It may be funny to you, but... Hello. I want to speak to Mr. Baines. 
No, sir, I ain't seen him, Mr. Baines, since I put him on a six o'clock train this morning. Does anybody know? Hang it, man, are you listening? Why don't you say something? What kind of a businessman is Baines? Going away for a whole day without letting anybody know where he can be reached. Ah! My, my, the uncouthness of some people. I told you not to mess with Baines, but no. He was of the horse and buggy age. He was standing still while we were going ahead. All right. So you went ahead, and you bought, and you bought. Shut up. I've had enough of you. Hello. Mac, where the dickens have you been? I've been trying to get in touch with you. If you just stop yelling, I'll tell you. I'm in Baines' hotel room. He insisted that I bring the check and the papers over here. Certainly I closed with him. He took the certified check left here half an hour ago to cash it. Yes, sir. You bought yourself a railroad. What? I take it the deal is closed. Come on, we're going to Coal River. Mr. Baines, Mr. Keith's been trying to get you all the morning. He seems awful anxious. Mind, but that man's got a powerful baritone voice. Johnny, here's though we're going to have visitors. Might as well be ready for them. Appears as though they're in an awful hurry. Appears as though. Baines, I want to see you. Well, loud as how you might. Oh, where's your friend, Mr. McKettrick? Did he get lost? The right interesting sort of a fellow. You've bought timber options from everyone around here. I've checked. You're a good checker, Mr. Keith. You can't deny it. What's the idea? Business. Now, you own a railroad and a pulp mill. Neither one of them's any use to you unless you get timber to haul to make into pulp. Now, being as how I got all the timber in these here parts, I calculate we can make a dicker. All right, Mr. Baines, if that's the way you feel about it. How would you like it if I tunneled through Hopper Mountain? Oh. You got an option on Hopper Mountain? You bet we have an option. That's where we're ahead of you. I don't doubt that, Mr. Keith. Any more than I doubt you could tunnel through that mountain. I calculate it could be done. But I had a survey made, and it shows about a mile of solid rock to tunnel through. Of course, it wouldn't cost more than a couple of million or so. Well, go ahead and tunnel. Oh, yes. There's one little thing you overlooked. What's that? A Leif Hopper lacked being 21 years by one day when he signed that option. I know, I'm his godfather. Well, neighbors, fish or get to bait cutting. All right, Mr. Baines. What's your proposition? Those papers, Johnny. Now, here's an agreement with a certified check, $250,000 in payment for my railroad, which you're selling back to me. What about the $25,000 profit we paid you? That's still profit. I'm sharing it with those good friends of mine who gave me, or rather Johnny here, the options on their property. Next, here's a five-year contract agreeing to pay those same friends of mine the right price for their timber so they can make a fair profit in the future. Baines, I... Mm. Calm down, calm down. Mr. Baines, where do we sign? That's Johnny's department. Right here. Horse and buggy age. Scattergood, could we speak to you for a minute, please? Why, certainly, Clara. We want to apologize. We, we certainly do. Well, it seems as though you owe someone else more of an apology than you do me. The school board of Coal River should be proud to have such a pretty, intelligent girl like Helen Parker. But Scattergood, she's a... Stop button in. We'll do what Scattergood says. His judgment's good enough for me. Edward Potts, don't you dare talk to me like that. Shut up. You've been running things long enough. From now on, I'm wearing the pants. Now, stop arguing if you're going to apologize. Helen's home packing up now. You better hurry if you're going to stop her. Come on, Squire. We'll get the rest of the folks and call on Miss Parker. <laughs> yep. It looks like we've got that all settled. Yes, sir, Mr. Bain. <laughs> Ipso facto. Well, that's good. We done it. We sure done it. 
We sure did, Plenty. <laughs> and you knew all the time I was your friend, didn't you? Plenty, friends are like old houses. You gotta keep repairing them. Hmm. See ya. Well, I gotta go down to the train now. Uh -huh. I knew that Miranda was the one woman in the world that I loved. I got out the old rig, polished her up, carried old Sal's when she was just prancing with pride. And I drove over to Miranda's and carried her off and we was married. Oh, Helen's over packing up now. She's taking the noon train to the junction. Well, what are you waiting for, son? That new automobile of mine is just hankering for somebody to drive her. You'll find the key in the lock. Mr. Bain, if you don't mind, I'll buy your rig. Help yourself. Come on, Sal, old girl, let's go. Think the radio will ever take the place in the newspaper? No, Hip. You can't swat a fly with a radio. Yeah, I guess that's right. 